Welcome back to Hannity. More potential trouble for Hillary Clinton as ethical questions are being raised over foreign donations to the Clinton Foundation. Our friend Ainsley Earhart is at the Hannity Big Board with all the details tonight. Ainsley. Hey, Sean. Thank you so much. Well, the Clinton Foundation, which was created as a charity after Bill Clinton left the White House, draws big money donations from all around the world. Two billion dollars have been raised so far since 2001. The foundation stopped bringing in money from foreign governments in 2009 when Hillary became Secretary of State. But that ban was lifted when she resigned two years ago. And those donations are now being scrutinized in the Wall Street Journal. Quote, the Clinton Foundation has dropped its self-imposed ban on collecting funds from foreign governments and is winning contributions at an accelerating rate, raising ethical questions as Hillary Clinton ramps up her expected bid for the presidency. Some recent donors include the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Oman. And now, even the left-wing Washington Post is questioning some of the foreign donations. Here's a Post review of the foundation's data. Quote, found substantial overlap between the Clinton political machinery and the foundation. Now, since it's illegal for foreign governments to contribute to U.S. political campaigns, that overlap could be an indirect way of supporting Hillary's potential presidential run. In a statement denying any wrongdoing, a foundation representative wrote this. As with other global charities, the Clinton Foundation receives the support of individuals, organizations, and governments from all over the world. The Clinton Foundation has strong donor integrity and transparency practices that go above and beyond what is required of U.S. charities. The conservative group America Rising PAC doesn't buy it and launched an online petition calling for the foundation to return the money from foreign governments. It reads in part, quote, right as Hillary Clinton is gearing up to run in 2016, the Clinton Foundation has begun accepting foreign money. Remember, the foundation spends a lot of their money on flying the Clintons around the world and paying future and former Hillary political advisors. This is wrong. Sean, All right, so back is to you. One, one quick question. So this, some of this money has come within the last two years. So this exactly. is recent money. Exactly. And it only, she yeah. might be running in 2016, so she's, she can't use this money for her election. So there's an ethical question here. Yeah, big time. All right, Ainsley, great job. Thank sure. you. Appreciate it. And joining me now with Reaction, the Washington Examiner's Rebecca Berg is with us, Republican strategist, New York Times bestselling author Roger Stone. Let me ask you, Rebecca, uh, real quickly, uh, your thoughts is this an ethical problem? Does this money help in some way build their profile? And does this need to stop? I mean, we're talking about the UAE, Omar, Saudi Arabia. I mean, wh why are they donating? Are they donating out of the goodness of their heart or um, are they donating because they want influence? Well, Sean, that's an open question. Why are these governments donating to the Clinton Foundation? But this is a potential ethical problem, and that is the reason that in 2009, it was actually the Obama administration that urged Hillary Clinton, if she was going to be Secretary of State, to ban these donations to the foundation from foreign governments because it created this perception, whether there is a conflict or not, it creates this perception of a conflict of interest when she's dealing with these foreign governments for work. And so now we face this same conflict conflict with her as a presidential candidate. And Roger, it certainly helps bring up her profile with all the traveling that they're talking about, all the press that they're getting out of all of this. John, this, this is a phony charity. This is a warehouse operation for the political operations of Bill and Hillary Clinton. They have, it, it's a luxury travel service for grifters. They have spent $70 million on luxury travel for Bill and Hillary. It is interesting that uh, over half of their contributions, over five million, come from foreign countries that would be prohibited from giving to a U.S. political campaign. Over a third of their contributions, over a million dollars. So they're trying to curry favor. They're trying to buy favors with the, of someone they perceive to be potentially a future president. All right, we've been talking, all three of us, about the potential problem as it relates to the Jeffrey Epstein case and what we call Orgy Island and this convicted pedophile. And you say as many as 17 times Bill Clinton was on this, this convicted pedophile's plane? That's correct. And how many times do we know yet? How many times he was down at that island? We believe at least, at least three times he went to this private hedonistic pedophilic island, never with Hillary Clinton and always for social occasions. You're also telling us that this case may reopen, that there there's a possibility. Explain the, the legal maneuverings going sure. on in the case. Uh, there is a, a, a lawsuit that would overturn the secret, one-time sealed non-prosecution agreement in which Epstein 
uh, and all of the adult women who procured women for him, and all the VIPs, Everybody many of the got politicians got immunity, right. and then they sealed it so no one would know. And this is, but this is important. This was a 14-year-old girl we're talking there about. There were some of his victims were as young as 11. Uh, I talked to a reporter today who has uh, actually questioned and interviewed numerous uh, of his victims. Th they run from 11 all the way to 17. Uh, and uh, the odds of Bill Clinton uh, 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 conducting uh, inappropriate conduct on the island, he was seen with two 17-year-olds that were flown specifically to New York for his amusement. This so, is where Prince this, Andrew got in trouble as well with, yes, with this woman, Virginia, who has spoken out. Uh, Rebecca, what is your take on this in terms of the possibility that this now gets reopened in terms of being a case because the one time a deposition was taken of Epstein, uh, he pled the fifth when he asked if he knew Bill Clinton. Why would you plead the fifth on that? Well, you would plead the fifth if you're Jeffrey Epstein because you want to protect your friends, protect yourself if possible, but mostly protect your powerful friends like Bill Clinton. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein was known to collect these powerful friends, to use a phrase that was once used in an article about him. Uh, he wanted to be influential, and so he doesn't want to ruin these friendships he has or what remains of these friendships he has with Bill Clinton as his wife is thinking about running for president. All right, last question, Roger. This may open as soon as? I think it could it could all come down as soon as March. If the non-prosecution agreement is overturned, then Bill Clinton and a host of other political big shots could be subjected to cross-examination. Well, it's going to be very interesting, and the impact that that would have on uh, any potential presidential enrollment obviously would be huge. Thanks. Good to see you. Rebecca, as always, thank you. When we come back,